Hi, my name is Marcus, and this is Servant King Unraveled. This program is called Your Personal Mark of the Beast. Your Personal Mark of the Beast. A lot of people think they don't have the mark of the beast, or the mark of the beast is coming. Well, I'm here to tell you that I don't know anyone that doesn't have their personal mark of the beast. Noah Webster says that a person is primarily the mask of an actor used on stage. So, here's my person, okay? So when people say, are you a person or do you have a person? Well, you have a person. You are not a person, not in the legal system. You'll hear people say, uh, or you'll read in uh, legal books, um, textbooks they'll say he's defending his person or these things were found on his person so it, it's something you possess and of course lawyers say that uh, um, a person is not necessarily a human being a person is a human being who has rights and duties ascribed to him this is what the scumbag I mean the lawyers um, call the uh, call a natural person and then of course there's also legal persons artificial persons which are corporations and so forth did you know cities are persons um, there's all uh, corporations um, uh, bankruptcies trustees all persons in law a country is a person <laughs> it's amazing what we can create when we're God so here's my person and of course, you don't actually wear a mask, you only appear in person. So this becomes an identity, an appearance. And of course, we know that appeared, um, nothing is ever what it appears to be. And of course, this is what's against the law. Because God says, I am your God and you are my people. And we're going, no, no, look, I don't have the face of God. I have the face of something else. And that's why the very first sentence I put on the website is, um, God has given you one face. We were made in the likeness of God, and we make ourselves another. And that's what the whole second commandment of God is all about. Uh, identity, changing your identity, your, your state of being. So I'll just put my person over here. Oh, and, and also you have, some, here in Canada, you have what's called the security of the person. So. I'm going to put this in a secure place. In the United States, uh, the Constitution says that you're secure in your papers, houses, persons, and effects. So it all has to do with this false identity, this false relationship that man has. So, a mask is a graven image. A mask is a face you make and uh, bear. That's what a mask is. It's a graven image, something we have to actually make. And God has given us one face, and we make ourselves another. So a person is a disguise. Yeah, a person is a disguise. A person is a dissembler. Remember what uh, the word dissembler meant? It meant to conceal the face, to, um, get, to get rid of the sameness or semblance that you were born with. And a mask conceals your real face. It conceals your likeness of God. In other words, a person in other words, a person is not a creation of God, and hence unconstitutional and transgresses the law. It's not what was set and established. The person is a false identity and hence a false relationship. So again, are you a person or do you have a person? You say, defend your person, found this on this person. Let me state with all certainty, no man is a person. Why? Because you can only appear in person, not be in person. So it's, uh, uh, and of course, appear means uh, nothing is ever what it appears to be. So to understand the concept of the person, we need to get rid of that per part first. It muddles our understanding. So if we get rid of per, we just have son, per son. Now a son comes from the father. If um, they are reciprocal terms, son and father. You can't be a father until you have a son. You can be a man, but you're not a father yet. Now you have a son born, ah, now I'm a father. 
And if you're a son, you must have a father. There's no way around that one. Now, the reason no one can figure out what a person is is because we are too smart. You have to be a dumb guy like me. Remember, God gives subtility to the simple, and that would be me, simple-minded. Remember, the legal system you are involved in is a nutty system of law. It's, it's unlawful. So when you read about persons in legal dictionaries, you're reading nutty stuff. We as God, we can make anything be whatever we want. So you're reading things about a person, but not really what it is. It's not defined. Remember when we went to the encyclopedias? So there's big debate of, about what personhood is. So let me explain this in a a simple way that anyone can grasp. You have a group of people and all these group people within this group are members. They're part of this group. And I have a basket full of apples. And the head of this group says to me, I want you to give out one apple per member. So I give each member an apple. One apple per member. Now, if this group is called a family, and the head is a father, the head of the group is called the father, and all its members are sons, then I would be given out one apple per son. Hey, there's the word, per son. And that's what it means. It doesn't mean anything else. So it means by and through the son, or by each son. Okay? Now, just because we as man define something to be something doesn't mean it's true. In our various acts and statutes, what we call legislation, we state that for the purpose of this act, that rabbit will be a dog. We can make anything be whatever we want. So it will be this, and it will include this or that, and we've changed the whole meaning of words. Amazing what we can do when we play God, and when we want our will to be done. Now, person means by and through the Son. That's basically what the word means. How did you do that? I did it by and through the Son, like a means to an end. So, perceive would mean I take it in by and through my senses. That's how I perceive. Perform, I act or do something by and through the form. That's what perform means. So I am known by and through the Son. So if you're a son of Canada, a son of Poland, a son of South Africa, then you are, this is what the legal system dictates, you are then a person, which is a national identity. Okay? So how do I drive? I drive by and through the sun, or by means of the sun. Now you can't do anything by or through someone else. It's not possible, unless they're a puppet and I'm moving them around. We already know you can't really become anything else. That would be a transformation. But can you do something by and through someone's authority or in their name? That you can do. So you can only appear to do something by and through another son, a son. And when there is no real son, well, that's witchcraft. That's magic. It doesn't happen. It's, it's fairy tale stuff, right? And if it's not real, well, it means it's not living either, it's dead. And that is necromancy, invoking the dead for some purpose. Now, you can be part of something, like the son of a father or a son of a family, and we all are. But to do something by and through something that you are not part of would require you to take or hold a part of. In other words... Are you part of that? Well, not in reality, I'm not. But, oh, here, look. Here's evidence or proof that... Oh, just a second. Here's my evidence or proof that I'm, uh, you know, look at all the Canadian maple leaves on here. I'm a Canadian. You'd never be able to tell if I'm a Canadian by just looking at me because it's not my true identity. Oh, look, I'm from South Africa. I'm a South African, right? I'm a Zimbabwe. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an Italian, you know? This is what the purpose of flags are all about. Every country has a different flag. So that's against the law. You're not allowed to do those things. Not according to God, anyways, the, the creator of heaven and earth. So hence a person 
Hence, a son is a part of, and a person is a partaker, to, to take part in it, right? So just switch the word around, and quite often you can get a better idea of what the word is. So if, a partake, so if you are a partaker of something that is unconstitutional, not real or natural, then you are a partaker of sin. Remember when on the program on the Constitution, I said, look, this is real. We all agree this is real. This is reality. This is what's happening. This is a Constitution. If you go beyond the boundary or the limits of what's been set, that is the transgression of the law because the law is the Constitution. And, um, uh, and of course, God calls that sin. So to transgress the law, the Constitution, to go beyond the boundaries, limits, set, and established. So a partaker is a person. So a person is somebody who takes part of something which they are not naturally a part of. It's something you have to join. And this is why God says, I bring you out of the house of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, you know? It's not like you're part of that. You never were, but there's a bond, something that's holding you there, a binding. So to take part, portion, or share in common with others, to have a share or part to participate, to have something of the property, nature, or right to have a part in, a partaker, one who has or takes a part, share or portion in common with others. And in this sense, the one who took the part as son of the father or son of the country is what the legal thing means by a person. Do you know, the scripture is um, called the book of the law. And... Um, you would think that if it's all law, all this law is explained in there, you would think at some point God would have said, well, this is legal and that's illegal. Do you know the word legal is not even in there? And do you know the word religion? I could be wrong about this, but it's only in there one time, twice at most. More than that, I guarantee you it's not in there. So it's only in there once or twice. I can't quite recall. So if it was a book of religion, don't you think the word religion would have been in there more often? Don't you think God would have said, your religion is Baptist. That's what I want as God. I want you to be a Baptist. Flattering titles, God calls it. You're not allowed to make yourself flattering titles. I don't know if you know that either. Anyways, if you were really a son, the law would just say, no son of mine can do this or that. But it doesn't. It says only a person. Someone who acts by and through an identity. It's a fictional relationship. So you are deemed to be a person. What does deem mean? Very important word. It means, const it means construed to be. You must be this because of the circumstances. Or treat as if. Here. Halloween. Trick or treat. Trick or treat, look, I'm in person, so I get a treat. This is what Halloween is all about, getting free candy, getting something for free. I will treat you as if you're a member of our society. So you're deemed to be. So don't you think you should maybe, if you think this is all wrong, or if you believe God that it's all wrong, don't you think you should probably figure out a way to redeem yourself? Deem also means... When I deem something to be something, that means I think it is that. It all has to do with our, our mind. And when you, so to deem this to be that, I think this is that. To redeem is to rethink. So when you actually go buy, or sell, go buy something, and you go, well, I don't want that. You say, I want to redeem it back. You, uh, you know, get your money back. It's because you rethought, I don't really want this. So redeem is not really to repurchase back, it's to rethink. And of course this is all witchcraft. That's all it is, just plain old everyday common witchcraft. You know these games playing uh, whatever they have, um, magic and sorcery and Ouija boards, those things are just fun. I mean, oh my god, don't think those things are evil, right? Would they lead to evil if you actually believe that? That's not what this is about. This is about us, what we actually do, about worship and obedience to the Creator. Okay? Not all those other things. You, you know, people get sidetracked on that. So we're looking at how we can redeem ourselves, and that's a big problem. First, you do not think you have broken the law. So no need to be redeemed. 
Now in the real scenario, we're out of one we are many, we're all, right? You are a real son by nature and by blood. And you are a son of your parents, your mother and father, by nature and by blood. This is reality. When out of many you are one, and become one of those sons from the one that you made, that is fictional. It is done by affiliation, by joining, by adopting. You have adopted this, and you are adopted when approved as a member, as a partaker. But in name only, not in fact. You can't actually be that in fact. So it's done just by the name, whatever that means. You can only appear as the son, not be the son. And if you have not made a graven image, a mask, you will not appear in person. Even if you cannot grasp that, your relationship as father and son in any country is fictional. Your country cannot be your father, okay? It, it's not your father. And whoever the head of state is, who plays the role of father of the nation, head of state, is not your father either. So like Queen Elizabeth II is considered the father of the nation of Canada. And that's why she can order you into court, you're her son, and I'm commanding you to appear. It's just all fiction, it's not real. You can only be recognized as the fictional son by and through the graven image, the mask, the evidence of the son. So again, your state of being cannot change, but your identity can. How you appear, wear a mask, is a different face, appear different, a disguise, a new identity, new relationship, whoever's image that is that you have on your face, because it's not your image or God's image. And of course, it's a graven image. Your legislation should say that no son of mine, meaning the son of Canada, can drive a motor vehicle except under the authority of a license and subject to the regulations. But the son of Canada can't do anything. It's not real, it's not living, it's a fiction, and it's nonsense. So a person is a false identity, which is a false relationship, like a member of this family. Who would ever thought that forming a group and actually becoming a member of that and taking on a new name, a name of everyone that's in that group, is against the law? Well, it's not really. It's only if this is sovereign, if this is the lawmaker and the judge and the king. So we can do things in groups together, don't get me wrong. You are not a son of Canada or any other country. And Canada is not your father. I mean, let's get real. Let's get real. I mean, if you're not going to act real and normal and natural and true, well then, I can't help you. can't help anybody. It's all made up fairy tale stuff, living in la-la land. Appear means seems to be as opposed to reality. Seem means to appear, to make or have a show or semblance, to become, to be fit, to have the appearance of truth or fact. Remember your legal system seems to be good. Here's a word you probably didn't know there was, a word called seamer, a seamer, one that carries an appearance or semblance, carries the mask. Thou art not what thou seemst, nothing is what it appears to be. So is your real identity the image of your parents? Of course. Ascending to your grandparents, great-grandparents, great-grandparents, keep going all the way up until, right, Adam was the son of God. This is the ascendancy. And if you don't know what's your real identity, whether it's the image of your parents or whether it's the graven image document of Canada or whatever country you're in, if you're not sure, Take your mask, start punching it in the head, and then start punching yourself in the head until you realize which one is you, okay? Pretty simple. The sameness of this identity is the national identity. So everyone in Canada is Canadian, everyone in the States is American, everyone in Mexico is Mexican, right? This is what's against the law. And your birth certificate is the proof of this identity, proof of a relationship, connection, proof of bondage, but in name only, not in fact. You use the mask as a foundation identity document to prove you were born in the family of Canada. 
Hence you are of Canada and belong to Canada through bondage. But you are not. You only appear to be. You have to hold or bear the graven image. You have to wear the mask or you will not be recognized. Now you will have to let go of it if you want to. No longer hold or bear it, but that's not the solution. But you do have to do that. In fact, the command is, remember in Deuteronomy 7, to burn the graven images. Burn them. So, the only property you hold is, in any country, is personal property. You hold this property by and through your membership, through this son. Okay? And of course, the father owns everything. We know that. It's just a complete mockery and counterfeit of God's system. So hence, in person, everything is vested in the queen here in Canada. I mean, she's clothed with everything. All power. I mean, you have no power because all power is vested in her. The British, um, uh, what we consider the Canadian Constitution, the British North American Act, all power continues to be vested in the crown or the queen. So it was before too, right? It's a different type of government than the United States. Um, corporations, cities, and towns are all persons, right? Your worship, your mayor, your premier, your, your state governor, your, right? These are all mini Babylons, if you like. Out of many, we are one. So if you sue the state, who are you suing? You're not suing the state. You're suing everyone that is a member of the state. Everyone that out of many are the one. That's who you're suing. Um... So where do you think the word baby comes from? Well, it comes from Babylon. Where else can it come from? There it is right there, baby. Because we give birth to Canada. Canada was born in 1867. The United States of America was born in 1776. The people gave it birth. It is their baby created in their image. Okay? Represents them. Your country guarantees your security of the person. I already said that. And we decide who or what can be a person. And, uh, of course, we've got corporate persons. We've got this kind of person. We've got bankruptcy uh, uh, people that are persons, firms, um, associations, unions. Um, well, there's all kinds of persons. You have no idea how many persons there are. You think there's only 30 million persons in Canada or 300 million persons in the United States? You must be joking. There's probably double that many. We don't even know how many persons we have. And, of course, lawyers think of corporations as just a man. It is treated as a person, as a man, okay? And artificial persons are created for the purpose of government and society, your man-made constitution. Said in the Canadian Law Dictionary, a person is any being that's capable of having rights and duties and is confined to that. So, your rights and duties come from your father. So, any, any entity that we've created has rights and duties. Any being is a person. God says, do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called. If you fulfill the royal law, not the common law, the royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the key words, as thyself, not in person. You do well. But if you have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in this one point, he is guilty of all. That's James 2, 7 to 10. So we are talked in the name of God. Your name has to be of God. Act in his image, not a graven image. Personification. Personification is the giving to an inanimate being the figures or sentiments and language of a rational being. This is given body to, to personify. This is also where the writ of habeas corpus comes from. To give me the body, give me the body. Um, so everybody wants the body. Satan needs your body. God wants your body, right? Because we are the temple of God, but Satan wants us to be his temple. God's will is brought, uh, is fulfilled. His will is fulfilled through us doing it. This is how the kingdom of God will be reestablished on earth. Everybody thinks Jesus Christ is coming back to reestablish. He's coming back to mediate so that the kingdom of God can be reestablished. But if we don't do something about it, we're going to be sitting here waiting for a long, long, long time. And I'll be explaining that a little bit later too, which is contrary to what everyone believes. Because they're reading something literally in the scripture, but if you read it closer, 
It doesn't mean what you think it means, but we'll get to that later. Idol. What's an idol? It's an image, form of representation. So anything that's um, represented, see everything that's created is part of the creation and it's all present. Whenever you represent something, it's, it's, it's a likeness of something. Okay? This is what the word means, to stand in the place of, to, uh, to exhibit by a resemblance. And the gods of all the nations are idols. Little children, keep yourself from idols. These are commands of God. An idol is anything, anything, which usurps the place of God in the hearts of his rational creatures. Anything but God is idolatry if you serve it in any way at all. Okay? Idolater, a worshiper of idols, one who pays divine honors to images, representations of anything made by hands, or one, or one who worships as a deity that which is not God. A pagan. That's what definition says. And we know a pagan is a countryman. And a countryman is evidenced by a document, a page, is probably where the word comes from, pagan. Idolatry is of two kinds, the worship of images, representations made by hand, and worship of heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, and stars, or of demons, angels, men, and animals. So idolatry is the worship or obedience to anything made by man or made by God. You go, what? Made, yeah. Only God. So, not, so anything in the likeness of what was made by God and anything made by God. We can't serve or worship and be obedient to anything but God. Any part of his creation, you don't, if you worship, serve, do anything like that, that's idolatry. In other words, obedience to any part of the creation or likeness of any part of his creation. Personify. I've explained that. To give animation to inanimate objects, to give body to. Okay? This is the act of necromancy again, invoking the dead. Um, and we're taking the place of the dead to bring it to life, which is witchcraft too. A person is recognized by law as such, not because he is human, no, but because rights and duties are ascribed to him. The person is the legal subject or substance of which the rights and duties are attributes. An individual human being considered as having such attributes is what lawyers call a natural person. Well, I don't care what they call it. It's all nonsense. The concept of a person was further developed during the Trinitarian and Christological debates of the first through six centuries. See, this is being done on purpose, this whole thing about this Trinitarian thing, three gods in one or three persons in one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say God the Father, it says the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Not God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Totally, totally wrong. So we know the person has something to do with this concept of Christ. Um, now God does not respect persons, and our law only respects persons because it's our creation. It's, it's an image we made, it's an identity, a being we made. We can only rule over what we create which is nothing, it's fiction, but we take the place of it, we act for it. Here is a riddle, remember I said at the end of the Confusion of uh, Face um, program, I said, can you think of anything that can be obtained only by means of the sun, or only by means, by and through the sun? You are a member of the family of God by being a son, we all are, we're all children of God. But when you separate from the family of God, you can only be reconciled back to God by and through the Son. Hence the word per Son. Here is the concept of the word per Son. Jesus Christ was not the per Son of God. Jesus Christ was the Son of God. And you are a Son of God too. A Son of God. A child of God. And His sons He gives great power to. He also gives them inheritance. So the real concept of the person is found in one sentence, and here it is. I am the truth, the life, and the way. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. This is Jesus speaking now, the Son of God. By and through me, the Son of God. 
And here now is a counterfeit son. You do not come to your adopted father. You won't be summoned into court or your country. Um, you can only come to your adopted father, your country, your queen, your president, whatever, except by means of the son. If you're not a son of Canada, you have no face before the law. If you're not a son of Canada, you have no face before the law, no appearance. You can't even make an appearance. They won't even know you. They won't recognize you. Who, who are you? All right, get out of here. But of course, there's lots of things that you think your way of life right now that you can do. Well, you won't be able to do those things anymore, but what are all the things you'll be able to do? Ah, different God, different rule, different laws, right? So we'll be getting to that. So the real Christ is a servant king who does the will of God and acts in God's name. The counterfeit Christ is, well, the Antichrist. Also an individual servant king, but of your country. See, we're also servant kings. Remember, we're God, but we're also the servant God. We have to be both things here in, um, in any country you live in. And the Antichrist is the person who does his own will which is the will of Satan. But of course we can't each do our own will, otherwise we would be a law unto ourselves. We have to do it as one. So do you act in the image of God or in the image of, or in your own image? Do you do the will of God or your own will? So are you a Christ or an antichrist? Christ just means the anointed one. God's king. That's what Christ is. God's king. God's right-hand man, the image of God, represents God, carries out his will. He's God's chief executive officer. He's his temple. He's the temple of God, Jesus is, or um, uh, we are also. He has the, God's power of attorney, acts on God's behalf, acts in God's name, appears as God, not be as God. Huge difference. As servant king, he has God's power, authority, dignity, dominion. He is God's ambassador, his minister, to administer his will, and administer his will to others. That's what the second whole commandment, the two main commandments that fulfill all the law. To love your neighbor as yourself. So, Romans 8.31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Man, if only we could figure out how to get reconciled back to God. If God is for us, who can be against us? That would be a nice position to be in, wouldn't it? Well, it's a position you were born to. We just got to figure out how to restore all these things. And this is why we had to get rid of God and control your knowledge of God. And the people in the world know this, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. When I said that the Word of God... God himself, the creator of heaven and earth, is the biggest threat to the national security of every country. You may have thought, <laughs> you have no idea. This is it, believe it or not. This is so powerful and dangerous to the people who run this world, it had to be controlled at all costs. So let me say this again. The real person is, I am the truth, the life, and the way. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. The only true person there is, is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The person of man is a mockery and imitation of Jesus Christ. But then we as God, doing our own will, is a mockery and imitation of God. We take the throne of God. We as God, as a lawgiver, we are not only God, but also have to appear as the Son of God, who faithfully fulfills the law. Remember, Jesus came to show us the way. This is how God's plan in his kingdom is restored on earth has to be done through us, through his son. We also are supposed to follow. You know when it says in the scripture, the first begotten, the first begotten of the dead, I have to think it to myself, yeah, you got your son Jesus Christ back, that's the first begotten of the dead. I don't think you got another one yet, God. I think they're all still dead. Just the fact that he says first begotten of the dead, He's hoping he's going to get some more of the dead that he can raise back to life. Um, and every time we, so we suffer the crucifixion over and over again every time we break our own law, our legal system, and a penalty is imposed on us. I mean, there's only us people here. See, this is all a mockery. 
Now let's talk about your behalf. Do you have a behalf? You know, people say, uh, will you do that on my behalf? Or um, I'm going on holidays. I, you can act on my behalf. You can do this for me in my place or stead. Will you act on my behalf? Well, is that your top half or bottom half? What the hell is a behalf? Do you have a behalf? What is a behalf? You ever think about that? Well, it has to do with identity, your name, and what you are a part of. And the main part there is what you are a part of. Everyone has a behalf because everybody is part of something. Everybody came from something. Only God is self-existent, didn't come from anything. Now, in the last program, you will recall that an identity is the relation that a thing bears just to itself. So your name is part of an identity, a relation that you bear just to yourself. It relates to just you, how you are known. A name is how an identity is known. Hence, on my behalf means you are acting in my place, you are acting in my name, or on my part. You are acting in my image, you appear as me. So, if you are part of, um, this is what an attorney is acting in your place or stead. So if you are a partaker in Canada, the, the, uh, an attorney can act in your place. If you're not a son of Canada, if you're not a member, not a person, an attorney can't act in your place. There's, there's nothing to appear for. And of course, when you go, see, the attorney appears for you, and when you go into court, who are you appearing for? You should just say to the judge, uh, whatever your name is, and say, uh, Hi, my name is uh, John Smith, appearing for the defendant. And they'll look at you and go, they'll throw, they'll, they'll go, well, you are the defendant, aren't you? And you go, okay, I'm the defendant, but then I don't need to appear to be here, I really am here. You see what's going on? This is witchcraft, this is sorcery. Hello, I'm here to appear for the defendant, because you were told to appear in person. Anyways, um, so this is very important. Behalf, in the name of, or you are acting for me, but in name only, or on my part. In other words, you appear as me. Or you can act in your own name. When you act in your name, you are doing your own will. When you act in someone else's name, you are doing their will. So doing something in the name of means by the authority of. Behalf also means on their part or on your part. Okay? If you have a part of something, if you're part of something. And of course, we're all part of God's family, and we're all part of our, you know, your mother and father, you're part of this family, and you're part of your grandfather's family, and so forth, all the way up. Uh, everything but God is part of something because nothing can create itself. Now your true identity, the constitution you are really a part of as a constituent, creates your true identity. You bear the relation of your mother and father from the union of marriage as one. And this continues up in ascendancy all the way back to God. Hence all of mankind bears the relation or the image of God. This is why we are all called children of God. And of course, I don't know if you realize this yet, but remember in the confusion of um, uh, God programs, or one of them, yeah, confusion of God program, we established what a God is. A God is a supreme being, which means it's the highest being. So within a country, there has to be a supreme being, and every th member of this thing, whatever it is, country, organization, society, nation, has to be come from the supreme being, whatever the supreme being is, okay? So it's part of that. That's why you don't own your name and all that kind of stuff when you're part of a country. Um, now, if you break this relation, this identity, by turning your back to God or separating yourself from your relation with God, you no longer have his image. So it's no different than if you go from one country to another. You go to another country, you go into the embassy, and you say, I renounce my allegiance to that father, that country, and I swear allegiance to you now. Well, that one's gone. You're no longer a son of that country. Now you're a son of that country. And if you make a graven image, a mask, a persona, a false identity, your real identity is concealed by the mask. Your real identity will not appear. 
So first God will not recognize you anymore and you cannot claim to be acting on his behalf or in his name or by his authority. You see, we are to act on God's behalf. We are God's behalf. We were created in his image. We are to act in the name of God, in his likeness and image. We are to appear as God, to be God-like, to take on the form of godliness, act in his character, according to his will, with his power of attorney, in his place or stead, with his authority and with his dominion. We are to act according to his jurisdiction, the law he speaks, the will of God. Everything is God's domain, not the public domain. That's a lame claim. <laughs> Whose name are we to act in? God's name. What is that name? Well, what's your name? Whatever your name is, is the name you act in. But God owns it. When you say it's your own name, no, no. You act in the name of God. So if your name is Bob, Bob is the name of God. I know, people are going to go, what do you mean that's the name of God? God doesn't need a name, right? He has no identity. It's not the same as anything else. It's only one, right? What do you need a name for? You act in the name of God. Of is genitive. You act in the name Bob of God. Of means genitive case possessive. Who owns that name? So when you were named, you were to be named for God. Because God says, the heavens and the earth are mine, and all that is therein. You are mine. I made you for my glory. So when you name your child, you are naming your child for God. Therefore, you act in the name of God. And be sure it is recorded in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Your name belongs to God, of God, I just explained that. But instead, what do we do? We register it with the state of your man-made constitution. It is recorded in the Book of the Dead, or should I say artificial. Now look at a Canadian summons, or an American summons, or a Polish summons. You'll get, here in Canada, you'll get, you are to appear in Her Majesty's name. Apostrophe S. So if you're appearing in Her Majesty's name, and they call you by your name, who owns that name? Bob's name? Her Majesty's name? Apostrophe S is possessive. Who owns it? She owns the name, of course, because she's the father of the nation. When you make your name public, it belongs to the public. Public means belongs to or concerns the whole. That's why God doesn't like publicans. Remember the story of the uh, certain man who had two sons and couldn't figure out which did the will of his father. And Jesus said, the harlots and the publicans will make it into the kingdom of God before you will, you lawyers and you religious people, you Pharisees, you preachers. So, so who owns the name now? The people, the public. That's why if you want to legally change your name, you have to go to court. And then when you go to court, um, the court will publish it for three or four weeks in a local newspaper in your area. Does anyone object to this name being changed? Because it concerns everyone. It belongs to everyone. I told you, you don't own anything. I don't know if you believe that or not, but you don't own anything. Not your name even. Um, common means belong equally to more than one or to many indefinitely. Belonging to the public, having no separate owner. Common also means prostitute, lewd, as a common woman. Proper means peculiar, naturally or essentially belonging to one. Not common. That is not proper, which is common to many. I'm going to say that again. That is not proper, which is common to many. And proper is what is right. Acts 10, 15. And a voice spake unto him again the second time, What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. God didn't make common things. Your name is now common. What is the common name? 
that has, what is the common name that has sameness? What is the identity, the relation of sameness? And that is your national identity. You all have a common last name, which is part of your address. All your addresses end in whatever. Canada. Of Canada. You are of Canada. Um, Bill Smith, 123 Front Street, Toronto, Ontario. Now everyone that's in Ontario is of Ontario. So there's your surname for Ontario. And right down to your town. This is what, what is not allowed. Okay, And that's why Canada owns everything. Right? Canadian man, Canadian birds, Canadian house, Canadian car, Canadian air, Canadian water, Canadian land, soil, everything. But of course, if it was yours, then it would be known as in your name. I've shown you all the reasons. Oh, sorry, here. I should put, um, yeah, common. However, all this is not true or real. It is artificial, not natural, but artificial. It is a fictional relationship. Natural is the work of God's hands. Nature is the art of God. Your artificial being, identity, constitution, and law is the works and skill of man's hands, graven images. So you are a member of whatever country you joined in name only, not in fact. Remember, court can only deal in facts. So something has to happen there. You have to um, um, claim something. You have to assume something, okay? We'll get into that later, too. I've shown you all the reasons why this is all fictional. It is impossible to be part of any of this. It is an illusion, a pure illusion. But you can be deceived into taking part, assuming it, acting for it, and thinking for it. In other words, I think therefore, which means therefore in the place of, I think therefore I am, because I think for it. It all has to do with consciousness. Now I want to backtrack a bit to appearing as God. This is very important too. Remember I said everything is an exact counterfeit copy or likeness of reality, artificial. This is why God prohibits the making a likeness of anything. We either act for God as his temple with our God-given life or use his temple and God-given life to act for ourselves. That is what Satan advised that we should do. God's will be done or our will be done. We are right in the middle between evil and good. Now, what did Jesus do? He was created in the image of God, just like everyone else. The express image of his person acted according to the will of God, the script. He repeatedly said, is it not written? Is it not written? See, Jesus didn't make this up himself. So follow the script, the scripture. He acted in the name of God. He said nothing on his own. He only spoke the word of God. Why? Because he memorized his lines. It was written in his heart. He knew it by heart. He appeared as God in God's likeness and image and acted completely in the character of God. And that's what you're supposed to do too. You're supposed to appear as God. So yes, Jesus appeared as God, but in name only, not in fact. You see how everything is just a complete mockery and imitation of the perfect law of liberty. But of course, there's only us here, so we have to do both of them. And this is where all the ins this is why no one can figure out the, how this all this stuff works, right? It's all crazy stuff. Jesus said, "God and I are one." Yes, and you and God are also one. Well, you should be. You are His temple, and this is where the Spirit of God lives. Okay, when the Spirit descends upon you, this is where it lives. It doesn't live in the church you made by human hands. God isn't in your church, I guarantee you that. And because you cannot separate reality from fantasy, you actually believe Jesus is God. You know, how can you believe that is that? I mean, this is all our indoctrination of Santa Claus and movies and fictions and people playing uh, uh, Hollywood, playing characters and everything. Some you can actually believe that is that. I mean, my God. No, Jesus is not God. They're two different individuals. And uh, uh, what's going to put here? And that's you know, I said here you actually believe Jesus is God. You actually believe that Clint Eastwood is Dirty Harry. You get so involved in the movie, you start thinking he's Dirty Harry. You actually believe you are part of the Constitution of Canada. Well, you're not. And the people of Canada constituted your being, and that is and that the Queen is your father. The Queen's not your father. 
she just puts on some gloves and a crown and then she walks around like you know playing the role of God that's what she's doing won't smile nothing I'm different I'm a queen I'm I'm not a woman of course she's a woman jeez the the wolves in sheep clothing your pastors and ministers of the various religions who have no training in the principles of law try to explain a book of the law to you well good luck you have no training in law how are you going to explain the law to someone right you've been taught religious stuff and they tell you just praise Jesus just praise Jesus just give your heart to Jesus he'll take your illnesses and your diseases and all your worries and all your troubles and your credit card debts and just give them to him and he'll take care of them Jesus he'll take care of them for you what are you talking about magic what's the matter with you he's gonna go to the bank pay your credit card bill right you got appendicitis he's gonna come and do an operation on you what are you talking about I mean you're nuts you're retarded you're insane no wonder they say in Canadian law religious people are exempt from being delusional or whatever the word was uh, they were using right Nonsense. That's not what this is all about. This is about law. This is about constitution. This is serious stuff. This isn't just some once a week go feel good stuff and pretending and everything. No, no, no. So remember, in name only, not in fact. And now you should know what the third commandment of God means. Are you acting in the name of God? Or your own name? Are you acting in the name of the people of your country, in the name of your country, in the Queen's name, an American name, a Spanish name? Are you acting in a common name, a public name, the name of the people? Are you acting by the authority of the people as one, which you are a partaker of? So, you, so in effect, your own authority as one? Are you acting by the authority of the will of the people as the supreme law of the land? And we all are, then you are taking the name of God in vain. You are taking the name of God in vain. Empty show. There's nothing there. He won't hear you. He won't hear you. He already told you. Turn away from you. He doesn't recognize you. I'm not listening to you. Your prayers are an abomination to me. Shut up your mouth. I have told you. I warned you. Do you know how many times in the scripture God says, um, danger, danger, danger careful beware don't make a covenant with them uh, you're going to be ensnared uh, oh you're a fool if you do I mean he goes on and on and wh why are you doing this why are you uh, imagining vain things it's amazing you got to read it sometime in the scripture it's interesting um, so what's the Christ or um, what's the Antichrist in the mark of the beast this leads us to this now. Again, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but me. If you want to enter the kingdom, do the will of my Father. You have to do the will of his Father before you can enter the kingdom of God. If you want to enter the kingdom, which we also know is here on earth, because his kingdom is everywhere, all right? doesn't matter where you go. Keep his commandments. The only way into the kingdom is in the person of God meaning Christ by and through the Son. Christ means anointed one, means God's king, means God's servant king. But he's more than a servant king. You know why? <laughs> a servant doesn't get an inheritance. Huh? A son gets an inheritance. You want to be a son of God, which is a servant king. God's right-hand man, God's vice-regent. That's who we should be. And what is the person of Canada or any country? The Antichrist. Every man who, who out of many has become one and placed themselves above all that is God, practicing idolatry, the worship and obedience to this one, which you are a partaker of, is the Antichrist. That's who the Antichrist is. He who acts in his own name according to his own will, who claims to be an individual sovereign and a partaker of the sovereignty of any country, is the Antichrist. Religions like Catholics 
or their leader, the Pope, or the United Nations, or some mode of government, or some man-made constitution, organization, whatever, are not the Antichrist. These things God calls idols because all those things are images. Okay? Only you can take the seed of God. Only you can be a false god. Only you can be the Antichrist. There's only us people here on earth, right? We make up things. This is really funny. We make up things and then go, whoa, whoa, that's the Antichrist. That's the pagan. After you made it up. I mean, geez. Which takes us, I don't even need to go on about that. So only you can be in Christ or the Antichrist. You have no other choice, one or the other. Which takes us to the mark of the beast. The beast, out of many we are one. The one is the beast. God explains this very well in the scripture. It is a kingdom. He calls the beast is a kingdom. There is only one kingdom, and that is the kingdom of God. So any other kingdom, any other sovereign, any other body that is a kingdom is a beast. Beast is a large irrational animal also called a brute. And a brute means destitute of reason. 300 million people in the United States as one is the beast. Even a town of 400 people is a mini beast. Okay, smaller one. Mark. A mark is any sign or indication of evidence or proof. So it doesn't have to be anything physical. Any mark. Any sign or indication of evidence or proof. Mark of the beast is mark of. So the beast has to issue the mark. Again, of genitive case, ownership. So it's the mark of the beast. The beast owns this mark. So the mark of the beast is an identity or a connection or relation to the beast. So if you have any proof or evidence or indication that you are one of the, out of many you are one, the beast, then you have the mark of the beast. Let us see what God says about the mark of the beast. Revelation 13, 15 to 18. And he had power to give life unto the image. See, we give power unto the image. Right? We, um, right? we speak for it. We make it come alive. We give power unto the image of the beast. Um, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. It means you don't exist. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. I think you're going to go to the next page there. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And man was created on the sixth day, so we know the number of a man is six, and his number is six hundred three score and six, so six, six, six. So someone can give life unto the image of the beast, not the mark of the beast, give life unto the image of the beast, to give power unto it, right? God says, you shall make thee no graven image, you shall not bow down nor serve them. Talking about the images. Um, now the image can speak the image of the beast. Well, where did the beast come from? Well, it's everyone's combined images as one. All throughout the scripture, God talks about in your forehead or in your right hand, which means what you think and what you do. What you do and what you think. So the mark in the right hand or in the forehead is so whether you make the mark or think the mark. Remember the whole thing about graven images? Whether you make graven here or it's graven in your mind. Your intent. The act and the intent. Um, the name of the beast would be Canadian or American or German. They're all names of beasts. Author of the name is the beast, the country. Number of the name means you are numbered amongst the members of the beast, a countryman. So each person by each son. Right? And of course we are numbered because a country, I don't know if you know what the word country means. Country is a count, 
with R-Y. R-Y is a suffix, means the art of. So a country is the art of counting. This is what a census is all about. God's going, don't you count my people, I'll count my own people. And of course he knows everybody. He knows every hair on everyone's head, he says. But this is the reason for the census. So everyone within a country is counted. This is what a country is all about. Um, and every citizen has a number, whether born on the soil or immigrated, an account number, a unique identifier number, that no man might buy or sell save he had to mark. Don't you buy and sell things? Who are you buying and selling for? The beast. The beast owns everything. You buy, if you're in the States, you buy and sell American goods and services. Everything in America is American, not God's. You get a receipt for everything you buy or sell because you own no property. You have to account for everything. And income, you want to know what income is? Income is your receipt for property, for your labor. See, when you give your labor, that's property. Why don't you get a receipt for your property? You are getting a receipt for your property. You're getting paid. That's what the money is, but it's, it's credit only. It's, it doesn't pay a debt. So income is your receipt for property, your labor. This is part of the ongoing swindle. Remember I said in the Confusion of Money program? So you are an American man buying and selling American shoes and American food, etc. You own nothing. The beast owns everything. You even use beast money, money from the beast. You even have newspapers called the Daily Beast, right? Now out of many, we are one beast. The beast is, of course, your constitution. So we have a God sovereign, a beast, a God sovereign, of the people, by the people, and for the people. All countries are like this now, unless, of course, they're under some dictatorship somewhere, or the old absolute monarchies. So of the people means the creator. Uh, of the people means the pay people is the creator of the beast. The people's image. You give birth to your country. July the 1st, Canada Day, July the 4th, America's uh, birthday, okay? When it was given birth by the people, so it's the image of the people. By the people, the beast rules through your commands. Um, in the Canadian anthem, which is the hymn to Canada, hymn to your God, it used to say, thou dost in us command, there was a line in there. Um, that was the original line in the Canadian anthem. Today it says, in all thy sons command. And they want to change that now so that it's um, gender neutral. So they're probably going to put in all thy persons command or in all, uh, who knows what they want to change it to. For the people, the beast has your power to rule for you. Right? Remember, your government carries out, exercises your authority. So all power is given unto the beast. The beast has your power to rule for you. All power is given unto the beast, and you give the power unto the image of the beast. So, for the um, so the Canadian Constitution, all and the same with the Canadian Constitution, all power continues to be vested in the Queen. She only becomes the uh, representative of the beast, if you like. Okay, Father of the Nation. So it is a God of the people, by the people, and for the people. This is what your government's all about. Legislative, um, executive, legislative, judicial. Executive is king, lawgiver, judges. What does God say? God says, I am your king, your judge, and your lawgiver. All three branches of government, sovereign God. So you've created, your constitution is a God of the people, by the people, and for the people, which is a God of man of man of man oh sorry i should say of man by man and for man <laughs> oh here is wisdom his number is six 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 man 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 there is only us people here name of the beast the number of the name and the number of a man i mean what could be more simple god gives you the equation and then he gives you the number and all you got to do is put the number in there, 666. Six is the number of a man, where six equals man. So you go man, man, man. Pretty simple, really, isn't it? And nobody can figure out what the mark of the beast is. My Lord. And they think it's something like, right? Well, I'm not done yet. 
When you take a part, when you take part in the beast, you now need proof that you hold the image of the beast. That is the mark of the beast, your graven image. But you do not need a number to be treated as a member of the beast. This is where everyone's going wrong. Even if you act like the image of the beast, there is an implied consent to wanting to be. Any relation or connection to your country, the beast, is a mark of the beast. And we know a relation is an identity. The mark is in your hand or in your forehead. What you do and what you think, that is the mark of the beast. What you do and what you think. You don't even have to make a graven image. You only need to think it and you have the mark of the beast already. Remember, graven means made by hand on a surface or impressed on the mind. Graven. If you act like a member of the beast, you will be treated as if you are a member of the beast. Remember, you will be deemed to be, construed to be, or treat as if. So, beast is your country. How was your country created? By its constitution. Who created the constitution? Well, all of its members, its constituents. It's an ongoing pyramid scheme with new members joining as you're born and old members dying. It continues, this beast will continue until it's dissolved. It's a corporation until it's dissolved. You made it up, you can destroy it too if you want. So, you are the creator, the created, and the life giver. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There you have the Trinity. The Trinity, right? There you got man, man, man. It's a mockery and imitation of God's whole system. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the source of life, the life giver. Okay? Yeah, it's just a mockery of... Um, all of this. But to prove, but to obtain the proof of the mark, you have to request it. No one will ever force it on you. The sentence you sign and swear that you say is absolutely true and not false when you request this is, I authorize the consent to the release of this information to the Ministry of Government Services for the programs and services I am requesting. This is how the foundation identity document is obtained. With you as the author, First mover, creator, hence the efficient cause of a thing. You consent and concur. Do you remember what the word author meant? Authorization. You're the boss. You're authorizing this. This is to certify your change of identity. It is an identity document. Now you have made your name public, common, belongs to all, belongs to the beast. Without this identity, you are not going to get any of the programs or services. Without it, you have no public servants. Well, why would you have servants? You're God. You have your own property. Without it, you are not God, a king, judge, or lawgiver. With it, and without it, you have no face before the law. So, without it, you don't have this. Okay? And forget about your court not recognizing you. The school won't recognize you. The airlines won't recognize you. The hotel probably won't recognize you. Anybody who wants... This won't recognize you. Um, okay, I should explain why your name is capitalized. Another thing. Everyone goes, oh, your name's all capitalized on these documents. Um, the reason your name is capitalized is because you are capitalized. Because the beast needs your capital, your inheritance, your life, and your labor. This is what makes it a beast. You pledge your life, fortunes, and honor. Remember what an atonement is? And cap, all capital comes from God. Everything you need comes from God. But you now are one of all ye gods that make up the beast. The idol, the love of country. You will notice that in the scripture the name of God is always capitalized. And that's why your name is capitalized, because you are God. You are playing God. And you are being capitalized. I told you, this whole swindle has no value without you. So how everything is, so now you can see how everything is backwards from what we think. Now there's obviously much more to be unraveled, uh, specifics. 
But the crux of the whole matter involves only the first two commandments of God, which in essence demand that I am your God and you are my people. This is all about what family you are in, who is your father, whose son you are, which goes to identity, and identity goes to property. So in the next program, I will address why things are the way they are, which has to do with one word, the will. Where there is a will, there is a way. But where there is no will, there is no way. Till then, my name is Marcus.